Hello, welcome back to second lesson of coasts. Uh, today we're going to look at geological processes. By the end of it, you should hopefully be able to understand the main processes that affect landscapes, more specifically coastlines. Hopefully, uh, the sound quality is a lot better in this video than the last, um, but we'll get straight into it regardless. Um, first thing I want you to do, a little bit of a recall task. There's three questions on screen. I want you to pause the video, answer all three questions. Should take about five or six minutes. Then restart the video and hopefully we'll have the answers on the screen for you. Uh, first question, define the term fetch. Second question, describe the difference between swash and backwash. And the third question, describe what a constructive wave does to the beach and how it differs from a destructive wave. Like I said, pause the video, five, six minutes, then restart it. Right, first question, uh, the distance the wind blows across the water is called the fetch. Obviously, in the last video, we we found out that the uh, bigger the fetch, the more powerful the wave. So, the fetch itself is the distance the wind blows across the water. Second question, the swash is the movement of water towards the beach, whereas the backwash is the movement of water away from the beach. So, the swash is where it breaks up the beach. The backwash is the water returning back to the sea or ocean. Third question, uh, constructive waves build up beaches with more deposition, whereas destructive waves destroy it through erosion. So constructive waves, like it says, construct or build the beach back up through deposition, whereas destructive waves destroy the beach through erosion. Right, we're going to look at the four main processes of erosion at the coastline. So there's four processes of erosion, there's four processes of transportation. That's what we're going to look at, and you'll understand by the end of the video, hopefully. Right, first processes of erosion, what we're going to look at is hydraulic action. So it's like the term says, hydro meaning water, so it's the water doing the action here. Uh, as the sea crashes into the rock or the cliff, whatever it might be, uh, the cracks in the rock have air in them. That the sea then pushes that air further and deeper into the rock, making it wider and deeper. If this keeps happening over and over again, eventually the crack gets wider and wider until parts of the rock break away. So that's as simple as that. Second one is abrasion. So this is slightly different. The rock that falls off the cliff face and is in the sea is then hurled back at the cliff face itself by the waves, basically. Um, hits the rock or hits the cliff continually over and over again breaking more pieces of that cliff off and falling into the sea i like to think of it as if i had a brick in my hand and i was throwing it at a wall i'd keep chipping away keep breaking little bits after little bit of that wall off until eventually i broke through to the other side it's essentially what's happening at a cliff face through the process of abrasion third one is attrition so this is the rocks themselves banging into each other as the wave moves forwards and backwards over and over. So these rocks are breaking little chunks off, like you can see on the diagram, eventually becoming smaller and rounder. So every time it happens, they become smaller and rounder. So that's the two key words I want you to get from attrition, that the little fragments of rock become smaller and rounder. The fourth and final process of erosion at the coastline is solution. Slightly different to all the others in that it's the seawater that's slightly acidic or it's weak acidity. Therefore, it dissolves, it wears away different chemicals in the rock, often calcium. Um, so as it wears away, those rocks get thinner, smaller, etc. So that's the fourth one, solution. What I want you to do, go back to each individual section or each individual process. Pause it, draw in the cartoon or the clip art and then match the definition to that clip art. So in your book or on your paper, you'll have four drawings of the different processes. You'll also have four matching definitions to hopefully explain what's happening in each of those four images. So pause the video, go do that now. Should take about 10 minutes-ish. Right, next, we're looking at the four processes of transportation. So like I've said earlier, there's four processes of erosion and there's four processes of transportation. Hopefully the number four sticks in your head so you know you've always got four erosional processes and four transportational uh, processes at a coastline. So we'll get straight into the four transportational processes now. Right, all four are on the same diagrams. We're going to work through them 
little bit by little bit. First one I want to talk about is solution. Very similar to the erosional process. Once something is dissolved, it just exists in the water. It becomes part of the water. It's not like you can see it, it is just there. So as the sea or the ocean moves, that solution, those chemicals in the water are being transported. Quite difficult to get your head around, but hopefully that image helps you. Uh, next one, the fragments or sediment get slightly bigger. So this is suspension. This is really like silt or soil or sand that is in the sea that essentially floats within it. So often it's sand that is being transported from one area to another and it looks like it's floating in the water as it does on this diagram. The third one is saltation. This is where the rock fragments get slightly bigger. Here, the rock fragments bounce off the riverbed or the seabed um, in the water and move along as if it was sort of like a tennis ball. So it's bouncing into the, the uh, water and then falls again, bounces off the bed, the seabed or the riverbed, and carries on along um, its journey, its transportational journey through the sea um, the last one the fourth one is traction this is where the bigger fragments of rock the boulders essentially the waves don't have the energy to pick these up and bounce them like they do the saltation but they have enough energy in the waves to essentially turn or roll these large boulders across the sea or riverbed so these are rolled across the floor a little bit like a bowling ball um, where they're just moving along the seabed very similar uh, activity that I want you to do. I want you to go back to that previous image. I want you to draw it in full with the labels, the four labels, and then match the four definitions to each of the labels, hopefully explaining your diagram a little bit better if you're not so good at drawing. Again, pause the video about 10 minutes, then restart it once you've done those drawings and the labels. Right, a uh, little task for you. I want to do a sort of a card sort. Now, obviously, I don't want you to just go printing this off because it's going to be near impossible. But you've got the four headings in bold. Transportation and erosion we've looked at. Deposition uh, will be the ones that are left. So try and sort those cards into whichever section they fit in. So hopefully you've got a table of three headings with information underneath. Again, pause the video, read through each individual um, square or card and see if you can fit it into a category should take about five minutes again so pause the video here and restart it once you've done that right the answers are now on the screen so erosion it wears away the land and removes broken fragments of rock headlands and bays crack cave arch stack stump are formed um, and the processes are solution abrasion hydraulic action and attrition so hopefully you've got all those all those three cards under that heading Transportation, it just simply is moving material. It allows sediment to be used in a different location for other processes. Um, and the processes within transportation, solution, traction, suspension, and saltation. And then the only other one that we've not really discussed yet is deposition. This is the leaving of material behind. So materials being deposited somewhere else. So spits, bars, slip off slopes are all formed through this. And they're caused by constructive waves or low riv river velocity and volume. But we're focusing more on the coastal areas. So the constructive waves at this, this process this time. Right. Last thing I want you to do, because I know I've been talking for a lot uh, and it's getting quite late. Um, I want you to suggest the different factors that can affect the level of erosion at coastlines. So suggest the different factors that affect the level of erosion at coastlines. Hopefully you can understand what that question's asking you. So think about the three uh, processes, what factors can affect the level of erosion specifically at the coastline. Pause the video, give yourself about 10 minutes or slightly less, depending. Um, see what you can come up with and then we'll go for an answer in a few minutes. Right, quite a few factors can affect um, the rate or the level of erosion at coastlines. They're all on the screen. I'll just read through them quickly. The rock type or geology, so hard rocks, more resistant, therefore they're less likely to erode. Uh, the fetch of the wave and the strength of the wind. So powerful winds and long fetch create the most damaging waves. So erosion happens more when the waves are stronger. Uh, the angle of the slope. So steep slopes erode more violently uh, and frequently. So if you've got gentle slopes, it takes a lot longer to erode. Uh, the weather conditions. So freezing temperatures and heavy rain increase the rate of weathering and the rate of erosion. 
Uh, the amount of vegetation, so the presence of vegetation helps to stabilize slopes, but also increases the occurrence of biological weathering. So if you've got more vegetation, often you've got more stability from your slope, therefore the level or rate of erosion is slower or less. And the last one, the amount of human interference. So if there's no man-made structures like seawalls or groins to protect the coast, the coast is more vulnerable. So often that's a man-made strategy that is there to protect the coastline. Um, so if that is there, then obviously the rate of erosion and, uh, and weathering sorry, will be slightly less. That's all. Hopefully that's all understandable. If it's not, go back and watch it again. Look at the parts that you struggle with. If you're struggling still, leave a comment on the video and hopefully I'll get back to you as soon as I've seen it. Um, hopefully there's going to be a lot more of these videos. We're going to work through coastlines. If you have got any requests for areas where you might have struggled or you're lacking uh, content or knowledge, just let me know in the comments below. Um, also, go follow me on Twitter. So that's at Mr. D Leak. So hopefully you can find that on Twitter. That will be where I'll post um, different information about videos up and coming or whatever. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Subscribe, like, all those good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.